Did you know that if you have atrial fibrillation, your chances of having a stroke are five times higher? Hello friends, I'm Dr. T, board-certified cardiologist. Today's topic is near and dear to my heart. My mother had a stroke when I was growing up and that led me to become a cardiologist. If you have atrial fibrillation, your chances of having a stroke are five times higher and the risk increases with age, with the presence of diabetes, presence of high blood pressure, congestive heart failure, and if you have had prior stroke or a TIA, transit ischemic attack, sometimes called minor stroke. Even being a woman age 65 or, or older puts you at a higher risk. And any vascular disease implying a prior heart attack, uh, presence of peripheral arterial disease, if you have blockage in the arteries going from your heart to your brain through your neck, or the arteries going to your leg, all these factors increase your risk even more. Don't worry, today we are diving into what you can do to protect yourself. Let's talk solutions. We've got great options today. Whether you can take blood thinners or not, there is something out there for you. But first, let's start with medication. Back in the day, we only had one medication it's called Coumadin or also Warfarin. And Coumadin works as anticoagulant by reducing the amount of vitamin K necessary for coagulation factors, the factors 2, 7, 9, 10. For over 50 years, we have relied on this medication to uh, decrease the risk of stroke in atrial fibrillation, uh, as well as in valvular heart disease, if you had a prosthetic mechanical heart valve implanted. However, Coumadin has its quirks. You need to get your dose adjusted regularly to keep in therapeutic range. And we measure this with a blood test called INR, International Normalized Ratio. And for atrial fibrillation, we need to be between two and three. If you have an INR less than two, you are not protected. You are prone to develop a clot and potentially a stroke. On the other hand, if you have more than three and certainly more than three and a half, your risk of bleeding goes up significantly, exponentially. And in addition, foods, the leafy green vegetables are rich in vitamin K, will decrease the efficacy of Coumadin. And there are uh, many medications can actually interfere with Coumadin, making the right dose a balancing act. Any cardiology practice nowadays has a dedicated clinic just to handle patients with Coumadin, called Coumadin Clinic. And even with all that care, only two-thirds of patients who are on Coumadin manage to be on target most of the time. But here's the good news. We now have four other medications that not only safer, but possibly even more effective than Coumadin, with a reduced risk of bleeding. These are called NOAX, novel oral anticoagulants, and you've known by their commercial names, uh, Prodaxa, uh, Zarelto, Eloquiz, uh, Cerveza, and they act differently from Coumadin. They directly inhibit one of the factors on the coagulation cascade. I would say Coumadin works more like a carpet bombing as opposed to do uh, no wax. The newer anticoagulations are more like a surgical strike. That's why they are safer. And the best part, no more adjusting doses once you are set. And no worries about interference with food or medications, and no more monthly blood tests. No that the NOACs make life easier, and you, your doctor, can choose the one that suits you best. But if cost is a concern, don't fret. Coumadin is still a reliable, low-cost option. In fact, all the NOACs were tested against Coumadin, which is still considered the gold standard, and costs just few pennies a day. And if you want to learn more about signs and symptoms of atrial fibrillation, watch this video, atrial fibrillation, new approaches for an old problem, 
causes and symptoms, I'll put the link above and on the description below. If you had a serious bleeding in your stomach, on your colon, especially if you have a bleeding in your eye or in your brain, you're not a candidate for a blood thinner. But we've got alternatives uh, for that uh, too. And one is called the left atrial appendage occlusion device. It's like a little plug that goes into a part of your heart called the left atrial appendage and is inserted through a vein from your leg into your heart. There is no need for open heart surgery. In addition, if you have atrial fibrillation and you are uh, planning to have open heart surgery because you need a, a valve replacement, a valve repair, or you need coronary artery bypass, the surgeon can also go in at the same time and ligate the left atrial appendage where most of the clots from atrial fibrillation start and minimize your risk of having a stroke in the future. Atrial fibrillation is the most common arrhythmia, the regular heartbeat in adults. And this is responsible for 20% or more of all strokes. But with the options we have, uh, the one of the five medications mentioned above, or with the left atrial appendage device, we could significantly decrease your risk of stroke. And if you want to learn more about atrial fibrillation, watch this video, Heart Failure and Atrial Fibrillation. I'll put the link above and on the description below. And remember, your health is too important to be delegated to others take control. If you like this video, please subscribe, share with your family and friends. See you next video.